It's time for Taking Authority with Bishop Eddie Long, Senior Pastor of the New Birth Missionary Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, one of the fastest growing congregations in North America. Stay tuned as Bishop Eddie Long boldly proclaims the power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, effectively teaching and preaching what thus saith the Lord, applying the word to the issues that we all face in this day and time. Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Join Bishop Eddie Long and the New Birth family as we are setting the house in order according to his word. Listen closely and experience new birth in Christ and begin taking authority over the devil, being more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Now, to Bishop Eddie L. Long. It is a joy to celebrate and to sing, and especially a song like that. Uh, a song like that indicates you were tested. And you passed the test. You better turn to your neighbor and say, I was tested, but I passed the test. I've gone to a new level, I passed this test. I am a testimony. Was going to give up, but I passed the test. It got rough, it got tough, I became whipped, but I passed the test. Look at me! <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Somebody has a story. Somebody has a song. Somebody, the devil said you wasn't going to get up, but look at you. Look at you. Said you wasn't going to recover, but look at you. Look at you. You're a testimony. A living, breathing, walking, talking example of the holiness of God. The devil thought you was walking by yourself. But you didn't make it on your own. It was Jesus. Tell somebody it was Jesus. When I ran out of gas, it was Jesus. When I ran out of power, it was Jesus. When I came to my wits end, couldn't get up, something lifted me up. When nothing else could help, Lord lifted me. standing and I just want to do something on this uh, wonderful men's day and uh, in your bulletin there were those who were recognized by the men for outstanding work and service and exemplifying manhood and I just want to take this moment to uh, recognize someone who has worked so hard in working with the men and the nation of Jesus and being very unselfish and giving of himself and bringing leadership and obedience I'm going to ask Deacon Curtis Crocker to come at this moment. We sincerely appreciate sacrifice not only of him but his family his wife 
who allows him and makes it uh, him available to the men and how many men he has touched and the outstanding things that he has done and in modeling manhood, um, being humble, submitted. And we just want to present um, the Deacon Curtis Crocker on Men's Day, November 17, 1996. The righteous man walks with his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Thank you for your dedication to God, your senior pastor, and the men of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. We honor you today for your selflessness, commitment to helping men reach the fullest potential in God. Bishop Eddie Long, senior pastor, New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. Yes, While you're standing, will you pick up your Bibles, please? Hallelujah. And I ask that you would turn in your Bibles to the book of Judges, the 16th chapter. Some of you guys were here first service. that so I won't preach long. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Um, I appreciate the obedience uh, and the understanding of that in which um, um, we operate in. The men of this church, we don't have a typical kind of men's day where it's a program. We like to move in the flow of how God has our service moving. And so we don't take a whole lot of time out doing all kind of little presentations and stuff like that. Um, and Deacon Crocker uh, passed me a watch that the men had um, bought for me, and I do certainly appreciate that and appreciate his spirit of knowing that I want to move with God. But I, I asked him as he presented it to me on uh, that, was that to tell me I preached too long or not in it. I appreciate it so, so much, and I, <laughs> and, uh, I love you, and I thank you men uh, for your love and your dedication. But it is time to hear he, him, the one whom we worship, in the 16th chapter of Judges, starting with the fourth verse, reading from the New King James, afterwards it happened that he loved a woman in the valley of Sor, whose name was Delilah. And the Lord of the Philistines came up to her and said to her, please understand the Lords of the Philistines uh, represent the enemy, and enticed him and asked her and said to her, entice him and find out where his great strength lies and by what means we may overpower him, that we may blind him and, bind him and afflict him. And every one of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. Looking over also at the 20th and 21st verse, Well, let's, let's look at the 21st verse. Then the Philistine took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters, and he became a grinder in the prison. Afterwards, fourth verse, it happened. Samson, a mighty man, fell in love with Delilah. And it really wasn't the problem falling in love. He just fell in love with the wrong one. I requested of the Nation of Jesus and Deacon Crocker and them that, that I could be the guest speaker this morning because there's some things that I've been trying to say of this year um, that because of the way we were moving, I could not move into that and God presented this opportunity to talk and say those things that are of the word of God that we also continue to move back into the house and set it in order. 
so often there were several people as we were venturing, Pastor Kearney and myself, Brother Gates, and finding someone to speak. Those who we wanted were tied up, and then it kind of confirmed that it was for me to speak this morning. And then in that, I'm gearing it more, the Lord is moving me more to talk to the women. And that is the reason why I put the men in the center in a place of honor. So often on men's day, we bash men, we jump on them. We know we, we a mess. <laughs> and, and we don't need a special day to be reminded. <laughs> We're all in the James Brown state. We need help. <laughs> and you are the ones designed to help us. And so in the midst of this, as I honor my brothers uh, today, and please understand when I speak this there is a balance there's an understanding here and I'm asking you to hear me in the spirit hear what God is saying in the spirit there are things that I generally I, I would say and probably will reserve that and do it next week next Sunday in reference to a little bit of the balance on this and I do not want men to take what I'm about to say today and use it for a license to be abusive and not to stretch and be all that God has ordained for you to be this is not its intent it is not what it is it's intended to do we are to honor women, we are to love them, treat them as if they are our own bodies and do not even bring a lick of harm but protect them, guide them, nurture them and do many things that God has ordained. But I must say uh, what has not been said in many churches is really a misunderstanding of what's going on. And I want to speak from the men from a title, for the men from a title, this and ladies I want you to to hear this because Delilah represented all that was evil, all that would sidetrack Samson, a man of God, to being all that God ordained for him to be. It said afterwards, after something happened in Samson's life, he fell prey to the devil. And what the men want to say today is, I don't want Delilah. I need you. And I need you to hear this, ladies. I need you to hear from the heart of men whom God has raised up and called to be leaders. And it is tough to be a leader. And every round that you go in responsibility, every height that you venture into, takes on a whole new weight, a whole new strain, a whole new trying, a whole new test for a testimony. And it's so awesome because God has called men to be visionaries, to carry that burden of vision, to set folk free, to be emancipators in the name of Jesus. But if women don't understand some things, they can, they, you can aid them. And I'm not, I'm not making an excuse for men because all of us have to give an account for ourselves. And we cannot blame any of our mistakes on anybody. Please hear this. Because you have the Lord. But it would be good to get some help while we're running this race. Men, repeat after me. I don't want Delilah. I don't want Delilah. Women of new birth. Women of new birth. Spiritual, women of God. Spiritual women of God. I need you. I need you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we love you in this place. Spirit of the living God, bring true understanding. Bring release and relief in this house. Let your anointing flow as we move and come against the adversary who tries to hold us down. Give the ladies of this house a tender heart to understand, not to defend, but to hear. Not hear from Bishop Long, but hear from the Spirit of the living God. Men in this place, Lord, allow them to hear that they will do those things that are necessary, that they will not get in a situation like Samson and lose what God has ordained for them to do. We honor you. We declare lives changed, souls saved, signs, wonders, and miracles. I declare, Lord, that the homes will change in this place and that the men and women will walk together in pre peace. And we will do those things that you have ordained. It is in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus to Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I don't want Delilah. I need you. 
And I hope you hear those two words, want and need. Men have a need for a spiritual woman of God. That is the reason why God said, it is not good that man be alone. And I will create for him a help mate. Can we say help me? Now, ladies, I understand, and the ladies in the first service, generally when I talk to men and preach to men, you fall all over the pew, under, holler, and say, yes, say that, yes, yes, yes. And the ladies of the house this morning was real quiet. And so I do want you, you know, truth is truth whether I'm talking about you or them. So give me the same kind of amen. Let me know you're still here. I had extra security this morning to get me upstairs. And uh, uh, everything went fine. I don't know what's going to happen in my own house tonight. That's my wife up there. The text says in the 16th chapter, the fourth verse, it says, and it came to pass, or afterwards, that Samson had fallen in love with a woman. Her name was Delilah. And when you understand Sa Samson, understand that he was a Nazarite, which means he was devoted, he was consecrated. Here is a, and please understand, I want you to hear this woman, I want you to hear this man. Here was a man who was consecrated, dedicated to God. He was set apart. This is, this wasn't somebody just got saved. And I say that in a lot of, and I said this Wednesday, I, I believe, et cetera, uh, uh, please understand, uh, 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 when a man just gets saved, he still has to grow. And so ladies who, who, who get ahead of God and say, well, he's saved now, I want to marry him, please understand that you're marrying a baby. Anyway, we're moving on, and afterwards it said that, and there was a men who were consecrated to God. So I'm talking to you in a spiritual context about men who are really serious about doing things for God, who understand that pre, uh, preordained or predestined before the foundations of the earth, God has called them into a special purpose. These men in this place right now have been called into a special purpose that God has done. Now, I want to do this because I did this this morning, and I'm going to move. Every man, whether you're in the balcony or on the floor, I want you to stand. In the overflow, in the vest of you, I need you to stand. I need you to stand because at this moment, if you've never done it before, when you leave here today, you will be, in a simple statement, a few statements, a consecrated man towards the Lord. Your mind and everything is going to start shifting towards kingdom business, doing what God has ordained, because there's a great and awesome task that God has placed on you and has levied on you. It's not about you. It's about the generations to come. God only blesses you that you'll be able to bless generations to come. He did not go to Sarah. He went to Abraham, that the seed of Abraham would be blessed from generation to generation. So right now, I want you to take this vow as you consecrate yourself to the Lord. Repeat after me. Lord, Lord as, I stand in this place, as I stand in this place, I ask forgiveness for my sins, for my sins. Past, past, present, present and future. From this, point on, From this point on, I will seek out, I will seek out my, destiny. my destiny. Whatever it cost, Whatever it cost I, shall I shall pay. I vow right now, vow right now to, live to live a holy life with the help of the Holy Ghost, the the Holy Ghost to lift up your kingdom, up your kingdom here, on earth, here on earth as it is in heaven. Is in heaven. I'm, doing I'm doing this in Jesus' name. So the, so the Father will be glorified. Will be glorified. Well, thank you. You are now in what God has ordained. Give them a hand, ladies. Come on. Come on. Give them a hand. They're, every man in this place now is consecrated and moving in the name of the Lord. Now, as we look at Samson, when we study this and when it says afterwards, I want you to hear this because here's the complaint or the sentence that ha has fallen on many men. Samson had messed up. Samson and many of us can look at men and we can find from pastor on how we have messed up. We master and mess up. Now I'm going to make that confession. We mess up, but the reason we mess up because we continue to try. Woe unto those who don't even mess up because that means you ain't even trying. 
And so in the midst of this, but in his mess up, he was disobedient. He messed up and he married out of disobedience. He married uh, 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 and, and uh, out of his out of his lineage, he married out of, out of what God's will was, and therefore, he already started walking out of the order of God. Now, hear this, because you can start moving out of the order of God and not really know it. He did that, and once he married his wife, then later, because of his playing around, joking, etc., he lost his wife. He was divorced. He got divorced. He went off and came back and found out that the marriage was put asunder and that his best man, his best man, fellas, was laying with his wife, married to her. Now, that was a pain to come back and find out you're divorced, not only divorced, but now to see your best man, the husband of your ex-wife. Now, he was going through some serious pain, but a lot of this was going on because of things that he did not do right. But a lot of times, we as men, we do a whole lot of things that are not right. And all of a sudden, we start going through all kind of pain. One of the things that women need to understand about men, we're not very good in expressing ourselves. We're very, very, very walled up. We only get so close to one another. We talk about things that are detached. We're wonderful. We can tell you Michael Jordan's stats. We can tell you why the Braves didn't win the championship. We can tell you all that. We can tell you about our profession. We can explain to you how a car runs from head to tail. We can tell you and describe all kinds of things that are detached from us. But when a man is in pain, when a man is hurting, when a man is going through, he has an inability to really communicate that because we're too afraid of being vulnerable because there's a nature about us as a warrior that we're always uh, appearing to think that we're supposed to present this strong side. We're always supposed to be strong, especially among the brothers. Nothing's supposed to hurt us. And it really tickles me when brothers get together. That is one of the reasons why I love when men go, when we go on our, ma our male advance, our men's advance, because you never see men laying on the floor crying, kicking, running, etc., until we lock ourselves up as men with nobody, when there's no women around for us to try to impress. And all of a sudden, somebody gets vulnerable, and then somebody else opens up, and it's like like somebody opening up a pressure cooker and because all of that stuff we carry around which we, we don't know what to do with which causes us to dr be drained of thinking and, 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 and following the Lord that is the reason why you find it hard and you say why is it so hard for men to hear the voice of God is because they're carrying so many different things in their head and mistakes and boo-boos and hurts and pains and, and they can't cry because daddy told them not to cry or a man doesn't do this and a man doesn't do that and a man's got to be tough and a man doesn't say he hurts and a man doesn't do that and so everybody doesn't do that doesn't do it and they sit there and they're so welled up and carrying pain that they can't even cry and so therefore when situations and circumstances come up they make bad decisions we make bad decisions because of our perception our perception is off because of our pain here's Samson in pain and he goes to a prostitute And the amazing thing about that, see, a man, one of the things I like about men, when men can sit up and men can look sharp, they can get, they can get their hair together, everything, they, I mean, they can be from head to toe, they can be sharp, they can articulate, and you can look at them and you'll say, that he's got it going on, he knows what the deal is, he knows what's happening, all that stuff. But they can be a public success, but a private failure. Because most men, ladies, don't really know how to be men, especially when you deal with Generation X and all this stuff and people that, and, and, and men, uh, uh, men who were raised uh, with no male influence in their life, so they got the thing off of TV. When I was coming up, you can laugh at me if you want, I came up in the 70s, Afro and all that stuff, and, and, and Shaft was a role model. Please understand that. Now, Shaft was cool back then, but now that I got the Bible, look at Shaft, Shaft was out of order. He was way out of order. But that was an image that I, that I had, and things like you had to be tough, you had to be this, you had to be that. And all of that, see, see, let me tell you something, ladies, that you need to understand about men. We're, we experiment manhood in private. We have laboratories that we try out stuff, and they explode in our face. And we hurt ourselves, but when we come out, we dust ourselves off and we just continue to put up the act. We're very good at being hypocrites. Come on, come on, come on. 
And so therefore, we are very much well public successes, but yet private failures. If the truth could be told, there's a whole different side to us this that ain't discussed this. And so what Samson did, Samson took himself and went into a private place, bought him a prostitute to find some relief from his pain. One of the things that you find what a man would do, man is not trying to find, he waits so long and his pain gets so intense that he just got to go get a something, an immediate painkiller instead of dealing with it before it becomes so intense. So what he was doing, he wasn't really trying to find a solution to the problem. He was just trying to get a minute of peace. And he would go to any length, anything he could do to get a moment of peace, knowing that it would not bring anything to him. It did not do anything. It did not set him up. It did not help bring healing and all of that. And you look at that, and here's this man who lost his wife. His best friend has her. He's looking for peace. He is a man of God, and God has called him to do something. And in the midst of all of this, God records in this book where the enemy set up a trap because they knew Samson was ripe for the killing. Ladies, I want you to hear this. You, you, you can argue with me, but I'm going because some of you think I'm on opinion now, but I'm going to get scriptural. I know it's got quiet. Please understand this. There is a trap from hell established to take these men out. Mothers, especially a boy, male child, there is a plot from hell to destroy them. The text says that the enemy came to Delilah and told Delilah, look, we want you to trap Samson. Find out where his strength is, that we can bind him and blind him and mess him up. Hmm. That's the reason why there's so many brothers in jail. All of them wasn't crazy. There was a trap. Waited till they were ripe, waited till they were disgusted, waited till they were tired, waited until they were so full of pain and hurt that all I have to do is present a situation. They need money, let's present a situation. They need this, let me present a situation. And situations were presented. He ain't after you, ladies. He ain't even mad because you come to church. Because he knows you can get very emotional. Women have held churches open, and I'm thankful for that. While men were absent, but the church stayed in idle. Because it needed a man in the house to lead it on. Please hear me. God has called man to be visionary he has called man to be prophet priest and king god made man then took woman out of man then took child out of woman man is to sustain child and woman and god sustains man what happened to samson samson when he fell the first thing they did was they put his eyes out why did they put his eyes out they wanted his vision What is the devil trying to do? He's trying to take man's vision because he realizes that he is the foundation. He is the seer. He is the lookout. He is the one that can see the big picture. He is the one that can articulate what God is saying. He can look at a mess and tell you it ain't a mess. It is a palace. God has given him foresight. God has given him the ability to see like God. But But the devil is trying to blind the man. He's trying to take his strength. Do you want to know why so many men went to Washington the other year? 
The reason they went was because they were looking for a man of strength. They didn't care if he lied. They were looking for somebody that will stand up and say something. And what the devil is doing is robbing men of their strength and then causing those to mislead them. God has enough strength in every man in here to lead a million men everywhere they want to go because they got vision in the house with Jesus. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And so many women overlook because it, it, it ain't that we want Delilah. Whatever Delilah represents, it doesn't have to be a woman. It could be a thing. It can be a substance. It could be whatever. But see, you have to understand, a man can give you the big picture, but it won't come to pass without the architect who knows how to draw it up. And there's something about a woman that knows how to put together details and knows how to do this and do that that will take what you see and bring it into reality. But somebody's got to see something. Now, you got to get this. You got to get this because you don't understand this. You got to get this. The problem is, see, ladies, say, hey. Thank you. Ladies, still in the house. See, one of the things that, one of the things, especially those who are married or you got a significant other, what is your greatest frustration? One of your greatest frustrations is that, 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 that it is difficult because men have lost their vision. Without vision, people perish, go unrestrained. One of the things that we understand in all of this is it frustrates you because when a man does not have vision, he cannot see, he does not move. And so your frustration is it is very difficult to follow a parked car. So now you're the one paying the bills. You're the one writing this out. You're the one doing this. You're the one going ahead. You've been working, and all he does is come and squat because he can't see. He's blind. And if you really understand it, you need to get this, especially some of you single, upward mobile, PhD, ladies in the house with big-time jobs who sit up and say, I really would like a man but I can't find one because everybody's threatened and intimidated by my position. Let me tell you something. If you get this, you're going to see more men of strength that ain't going to be intimidated by. They're going to help you when you get your check. Don't care how big your check is. It could be a hundred times bigger than his. He'll pick you up on payday and go and put it in the joint account and not be intimidated and come in the house and still provide vision. If you understand that the man's eyes cannot be put out and he has to have the vision and he does not want Delilah, he needs you watch 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 see there's something there is something I got to tell you because here this woman who was not a woman of God knew something that the sanctified women didn't know. <sighs> she knew something that, that the church girls didn't know who drew up and tongue talk and fire baptized everything. That's good, but when we get home, you need to understand that I am the visionary and there are things that a man needs that a woman provides. There, there's some things. This woman who, who had all of this femininity, this, this woman who had all of this charm, there was something that, that she knew that, 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 that somehow we've missed there, something that the visionary needs and that he ain't getting and it's got this scale off balance and it's perpetuating Curse after curse after curse after curse. I know we mess up, but you have a way of calling those things to be as though they were. God did not create you to be loud mouth, dirty, and broken, and that kind of stuff. He created you in the beautiful femininity of there probably wouldn't be so many gay folk if you would walk like you're supposed to walk and be like you're supposed to be and, and, and present that femininity like 
and be the lady that she, that that probably wouldn't be, wouldn't be. But what did? What did? What did? Help me, Holy Ghost. What did Delilah know? I mean, homeboy got up out of bed from a prostitute. What did she know that most women don't know? Mama didn't tell you this, but daddy is. Listen. The first thing Delilah knew and did that every woman, 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 should do is she talk to him. Not add him. To him. Ladies, can I hear you say, she talked to him. Oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. See, see, listen, 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 listen. You see, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me cut your cosmetic bill. Let me save you a little money on some clothes and a few health spa outings. Let me, let me straighten something out. See. A woman doesn't have to be a beauty queen to have a man. No, she does not. What she has to know is how to talk to him. Now, I know you done seen one sister with a man that you couldn't understand how she get him. You thought you looked better, strutted better, everything, but she got what she want. It wasn't what she was strutting. It was how she could talk to the one that was strutting next to her. It was not how long her hair was, but she knew how to talk to him. Fellas, say, talk to me. She knew how to talk to him. She knew how to speak to him. What's this? She knew how to speak to him without putting him on guard, without making him feel like he was being attacked. Because a man is a warrior by nature, and therefore if he feels like he's being attacked and have to defend, he huffs back up and he does not release himself because he cannot stand to be challenged. You have to know how to talk to a man to make up an idea and then convince him it was his. And when you do that, See, think about it. See, that somehow we don't understand. See, a man, I don't care what you say, a man needs, I'm going to back this up with scripture, a man needs affirmation, he needs praise, he needs all them things, an attaboy, a pat on the back, and all that stuff, because he has an ego. Say ego, man. Ego. Now, you, he has an ego, and you got to understand that. To be a visionary, to see things big, you got to have an ego. He has an ego, which is easily bruised. That's why we do silly things to impress you. You know, you went out with your man and, and it was cold outside. You had on your overcoat and he had on his little jacket and while he was freezing, but you turned to say, honey, aren't you cold? No, no, I ain't cold. I ain't cold. It's freezing out here. No, baby, I ain't cold. I just, I was, I was born in Alaska. I ain't cold. This ain't nothing. And then she says, oh, baby, you so strong. Show your right. Show your right. Show your right. That's all he wanted was affirmation. He didn't want you to turn and say, fool, you need a cold. No, you set up and said, if you ain't cold, I believe you ain't cold. You, my man, stretch your stuff. Delilah 
because she knew how to talk to him. Say, talk to me, fellas. She knew how to talk to him. She, she, would, she, she would sit and she would talk and she would speak and she would sit there because she loved the way he would sit there in the chair and she would watch him hit the remote. Most people go through all the channels, but, but Samson would hit number 23 and Delilah would look at you and say, ooh, that was so wonderful. You're so decisive. Most men go through all channels. You knew exactly which channel you wanted, Samson. Ah, you're so wonderful. You make decisions on the spot. Samson say, want to see me go to 45? <laughs> I can do it with my right hand. <laughs> Fellas, say, talk to, talk to me. And see, this is the reason why. See, say, I got to get scripture with you. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. Follow me. I'll be here in a moment. In Genesis 1 and 1, you don't have to turn to it, you know it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the what? When God created the heavens and the earth, in Genesis 1 and 2, it said, And the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved over the face of the water. 1 and 3, and God said, Let there be light, and light came. Pew, bam. Now, you remember when I was preaching about the glory? See, God could not do anything until glory was created. Say glory. glory. Now, when you understand that, God said, before I can say light be, before the word would move, before the vision would come to pass, before I can call anything out of nothing into something, before that could happen, I need an angelic host that would create glory that will enshroud itself around me that I might sit upon the throne. So before I get to work, I need praise. I need stroking. I need somebody to tell me, Lord, you're bad. You're holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, you're holy. He's holy. He's holy. And in the midst of all that he's holiness God was able to say light be and light came to pass bam text also said that God made man in his my text says Genesis 1 26 made man in his image now that's in essence and then when you go into the, into the second chapter you'll find that God scooped in the ground and pulled out of the clay and made a man blew the, blew the breath of life in function man is the living representation the manifestation of God here on earth therefore if God needed somebody to create glory before the vision that he had would come to pass that means his likeness here on earth who he put the vision in here on earth has to have somebody around them creating glory for whatever is in them to come to pass no I ain't got that rep I don't understand that okay the men here are the foundation everything the reason why society is off do you black white pink red polka dot is because the men are not where they're supposed to be because the order of God was he made man first. Whatever he pulls out of man, man has to sustain. That's the reason why even the court system even looks at with alimony and reference that it was given to the woman because even the heathens understood that if, if, if the, the man is the covering and if he's out of the house, he's going to pay. He's responsible. You're responsible. So in all of that, in the image of God, we need the glory created around us to bring about what God has ordained and spoke into us before the foundation of the earth. We have vision in us. That's the reason why I'm challenged how all the young men are being pushed on drugs and dope and sex and going out of here with HIV virus and stuff like that because they're just crazy and they, they're letting the devil trap them and tell them there's no other way. There is another way. And one of the things is... We we don't want Delilah. We need you women because women need to understand that you are the glory producers of man. First, second Corinthians 11, uh, first Corinthians 11, seven, I read it for a man indeed ought not cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of man for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. I'm reading scripture, y'all. Neither was the man created for the woman. 
Neither was the man created for the woman. I might get stuck here. Neither was the man created for the woman. Might need somebody to hit me to get me to go on. Neither was man created for the woman. Neither, neither, I'm sorry, honey. Neither was man created for the woman. But the woman was created for the man. The woman was created for the man. The Bible says that the woman is the glory of the man. She were created for the man to produce the glory, the stroking, the talking to, that he would be able to speak those things that God has ordained and you help him bring it to pass if you're not lifting him up with positive affirmation and stroking him and telling him who he is in God you'll never realize what God has placed in your house and in your presence because there's no glory in the room to bring about the glory of God watch this Delilah Samson creating glory for him to operate and feel like a man she became his glory she rapped to him don't talk about a man's rap honey you need a rap oh Samson you're so strong oh come on in here baby oh look at the way you turned that doorknob Samson, you are great. You are somebody. She didn't throw up in him. You just came from being over that prostitute, did you? Uh, you already been through one marriage. Don't be coming up in here thinking you're going to get to. No, Samson. <laughs> it's 1030, Samson. You come in at 1030. I cooked at 6. You wasn't here. Go warm something up. Put it in the microwave. No, Samson. No, you didn't disturb me. I was just lying down. How could I sleep when you're not here? I was like, sit down, I'll cook you some biscuits from scratch. Sir, would you like steak? I'm talking to you, baby. Just for See, if you want a man to do something in the morning, wake up, and if you need the bed made, just, honey, the way you bent over. Just, just do that again. Good grace. Now pull that spread up. Ooh. Oh, tuck, tuck. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look, look. You a bed-making man, Samson. She talked to him. Number two. The second thing that Delilah knew and she did that most women don't know, she touched him. Men say, she touched me. She touched See, she, 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 she touched him. Then, Samson, lay, lay your, your head down. Just Samson. See, it's something about when somebody cares and they touch you. Care means unjudgmental. Just lay, I, you, you don't have to explain nothing. Lay your head down, just, just touch him, just hold him. See, a man is really a baby. We, we need to be rocked. We, there's a side that most women never experience of a man because you don't want to rock him. I guarantee you, if you rock him, he'll rock your world. You ain't seen no world rocked until you rock him first. I'm talking to married folk. When you get married, then... Men say she touched him. That's why God allowed you to get the cosmetics, the Mary Kay, the lotions and things. You have such soft skin, and when you put your soft hair and hand and caress a man across the face and thing. It's not like he's getting his face sanded or anything. It's, it's a caressing that's moving, that's, that's touching as you're putting your, she, she touched him. Now, now see, 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 see. Sansom left a prostitute to go to Delilah. Now I asked myself, why, you, why, why are you going to leave a prostitute? Now if you're going to go buy some, 
Now, this is me. Now, Samson was a first-class man. Now, I know he didn't buy Super 8 stuff. <laughs> now, if you go, if you're going to buy some back when you was back in the world, I mean, now, don't be getting no $10. Now, if you're going to buy some, come out with some El Musto Gusto and go downtown in a high rent district. And excuse me, woe unto him who would buy ugliness. So she had to be fine. Now, why would he leave a fine woman that he can go see any time to go to Delilah? Because she, she touched him. See, the prostitute, hear this, gave him sex. Delilah gave him intimacy. And one of the things that women don't seem to realize, and I ain't talking about 20-year-old boys. I'm talking men, excuse me. I'm talking about mature men. Mature men want intimacy more than sex. If they're at a point in their life that they need to be touched, they need Intimacy, same thing you've been, they, it, it's not, they, they, the, I'm talking about mature, they need intimacy, they, they need to be touched. Have you noticed that Delilah was able to disarm Samson and do everything and get everything she wanted from Samson and she did not lift her dress or drop nothing once? And that's a message to you single women. Please understand, no license, no promise. Because doing that 10 times out of 10 runs him away, then brings him to you. And the reason why he does not marry you because you've done that, because he really didn't come to you for sex. His flesh talks to him, but really deep down inside his heart, he came to you because he was looking for intimacy. There was something about the caring hand, the touch, the closeness of a woman and she touched him, and in her touch, she made him comfortable. Hmm. She talked to him, she touched him, and finally, she gave him a place to rest. Jesus said something really sticks with me a lot of times in my understanding of Jesus. He made a statement. He said this. He said, foxes, them foxes, they got holes to go to. They got the vision there. man with the key. I'm going to talk to you about the visionary later. Um, <laughs> I talked to a few members of, of the family the other day, and I, uh, Kirk Franklin and family, and I talked to Fred on Friday. And when they told me about the fall of Kirk, I had just ministered to all of Kirk's family when they were here about the gift that God had put in them. I don't care what who you are, family. This whole thing revolves around Kirk, the sovereignty of God that he's using. The vision is in him. You're placed around him to cover the vision. Families, you're placed around the visionary to cover the visionary. He is a gift. And they said when they looked on the floor and saw him laying there motionless with blood around, their whole future flashed that if he doesn't get up, it's over for me. They saw the vision that everything they had tied everything up in that God had ordained and orchestrated was laying there in a pool of blood. And they took it for granted until the moment they looked 
at the stillness of what God sent. Visionaries, men who are so uptight. See, women, you can get emotional. You can go to retreats. You can cry. You can do this. You didn't, when the last time you've seen your husband cry? When the last time you've seen your son cry? He's uptight. He needs a place to rest. See, the devil knows that. That's the reason why the men, the young men and women today don't have that smooth temptation music and, and Smokey Robinson and the miracles and all that kind of stuff that kind of helps you rest because they want to because they don't want them to rest. The devil doesn't want you to rest. So even when you come home, it keeps you off. You're not resting. It's messing up the vision. It's messing you up. Foxes! can't come home because I can't rest in my own castle. There's nobody in here that understands if I die right now, I'm carrying your future. I'm carrying your life. I need rest to think because you know why men don't hear from God? God cannot speak to a troubled spirit. And if they never get rest, God cannot restore the spirit of men. Them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But if they can't worship in spirit because they're tired everywhere they go, they got to be Mr. Joe at work and Mr. This there and Mr. This. And when they're out with folk, they got to be this and that. Can I come home and just be who I am? Can you not understand that I am tired? Rest, she made him feel secure. Come in here. You ain't got to worry about this is your sanctuary. I'll protect you. I won't. Just, just rest. And you want me to get up and turn the TV off? I just rest. I'll take the shoes off. Just rest. Yeah. I, I, I told the church this morning, I never really understood until recently why my mama would do the bed slams at about 8 to 8.30. When I was young, my mom be running through the house. Bam, go to sleep. Bam, go to sleep. Bam, go to sleep. Don't you understand what this is? What this is? Because she was getting us out of the way because my daddy was coming home and he needed to rest. Now, my daddy wasn't really, I'm not going to sit here and idolize him and say he was the most wonderful man. He was rude to my mother sometime. He was this, he was that. My daddy was a tough guy. But my mother took this alcoholic in her creative glory and transformed him into what God ordained by telling him who he is. I can remember my daddy getting home at 10 o'clock at night and mama asleep and snoring. But when she heard the key hit the door, she would get up and cook scratch food. Not tell him he missed dinner. Every time, didn't miss a link. He was getting up at 4 in the morning. She was up at 4. I could smell her up because she's cooking country ham and, and bacon and stuff like that and biscuits and, and the coffee's percolating. And I'm saying, what they doing up this early in the morning? My daddy built four churches around this way in the southeast that are still going today that because this woman sacrificed to bring about the vision, folk are still being blessed even though he's dead. He could rest. He, he, he could rest. He could rest. He could rest. And because he could rest, he could do judgment and he could speak. And my daddy made a rule that when we got to the seventh grade, he wasn't paying for nothing but food and putting a roof over our head. We complained. We murmured in private. I thought he was the meanest thing that ever walked this earth until I got on my own.
And when I got on my own, that's the reason why the Bible will say, never seen a righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. I knew how to take care of myself. I knew how to get a job. I didn't nobody have to teach me anything. I was able to go and get and take care of myself. I didn't need to move in with no woman. I could stand on my own with Jesus because I learned through that of my daddy who God allowed my mother to give them rest that he was able to do it. And so my kids are benefiting from the vision of my daddy. If you can't take care of yourself, He kept coming over. A man will be driven to go where he could rest. And if he ain't coming home, sometimes the reason is he can't rest. destroyed and blinded the man of God and he started something God had to finish she talked she touched she made a place for him to rest ladies your blessing is tied up and the talking and the touching and the making of rest. If you go back and read Proverbs 31, who can find? You'll find it ties back into all of that. I don't care what the news told you. I don't care what you read in essence, Luke and whatever else, Ebony. That ain't what God said. You can sit up and say what they aren't and what they're this and that. And what you do is make. I'm so glad my mother was such a woman that she transformed in her creative glory and helped my daddy move into what he was supposed to be. He didn't leave perfect, but I'm telling you, he was a man that sustained the family. If anybody in the family needed money, brothers, sisters, or whatever, they came to my daddy. Tough being a visionary. Because bottom line, men know all this stuff, your future ladies, my children are resting on my shoulders. I'm thinking about more things than you think I'm thinking about. And sometimes I focus too much on my failures instead of what I can do. And I need you to remind me and positively stroke me into my can do ness and not what I didn't do. Rise up! say something to you men. Some of you have fallen. Some of you have messed up. Just like Samson. Was blind. But when you pick up that 21st and 22nd verse, go on through that chapter. Samson got some help. There's some strength still left in you can't blame anything on anybody. And you need to make up in your mind wherever you are. If somebody can just help you wrap your arms around a few things, you're going to take this enemy down. Samson was able to get help even from a child. That he was able to give the enemy the final blow. Don't let him get the last lick. There's some folk around you that are just reaching out to try to help you. I know it's tough. I know it's tight. But in the toughness and tightness of it all, you're so close to your victory. And the opposition is trying to hold you back. Don't sit up and say, I ain't got no woman to pray. You still got God. You still have vision inside of yourself. And although I understand you, you know what? Let me describe loneliness, y'all. Loneliness is to be 
in a crowd with folks that don't have a clue about what's going on with you. I know people don't have a clue. I know what you say, but God knows what's in here. There's a man of destiny that can change the environment of many, change the lives of many to come, sitting here with my hand on it. Long after you're gone, when your time is up here and you're with God, there are going to be men and women around this world who will be doing things because you made a decision to pay the price to not give up. Even though you were tired and uptight, you didn't give up. You kept going, you kept going, you kept going, you kept going. And because of your keeping going and pressing on, God was able to touch generations long after you leave. It ain't just about you, men. It's about the vision God placed in you. The vision he puts in you is to touch generation after generation. You are carrying the lives of these women in this place. And if you don't get no support, God still says that you got to come forth with it. You cannot give up. You cannot allow anybody to take the vision I've given you. You can't lose that. You can't. You can't lose it. Because men, you know what the ultimate relationship, and I said this Sunday when I'm through, the ultimate thing is not that you get really close to flesh. The ultimate thing is that you get close to the Spirit of God. That you walk with God. And all this pressure and all this pain was to push Samson closer to God. That God would just Refresh him. Isn't that what you want? Isn't that what you want? Don't you want God just to breathe another breath of life in you? Just, oh Lord, just. Do you know God breathed life into man before the woman got here? He said, he molded you. He made you. He created you. He gave you divine destiny. And then the same God that blew life into us in the garden is the same God that's willing to blow life into you right now every man in this house stand stand don't want, every man women stay right down because i need you to do something clear your hands man i know you're tight i know i want you to lift your hands unto the lord spirit of the living god i'm just Father, in the name of Jesus, you know where these men are in their life right now. You know what they're going through. You know what they're dealing with. You know the vision that you placed in them. You know the dreams. You know the hopes. You know the people that they will save and touch. You know, Lord, in all that you have done, what you have done and in the name of Jesus. Right now, blow a fresh breath of life. Receive it, Lord. <sighs> Lay aside every weight and sin. I don't care. Whatever mistakes you made yesterday. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. You messed up. That's okay. God knew it. He 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 knew it. Create right now in us clean hearts. Oh, renew a right spirit. Thank you, Lord. Touch. Life, 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 life. Thank you, Lord. Ah, life. Life, 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 life. Thank you, Lord. Relief. Hallelujah. Thank you. Ah. However you want to praise him at this moment in the name of Jesus. Just do it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now. Ladies, I need you to do something. I need you to stand. Clear your hands. 
need you to hear this. Let me show you the order of God. You are to create glory for the man. And the man is to produce the glory for God. So while you're creating glory and affirming these men, these men are going to be giving praise unto God. Let me tell you something, ladies. I know you never get into this. I've been to women's retreats. I've been to women's advances and stuff like that. You have never, ever witnessed a move of God like men coming together, released, and praising God. There's something about when a man offers up, and it's even in the book of James, I even teach that when a man offers up praise to God because God has created him, and he created you to help him do it, you have to free him up to do it. And so right now, we're imperfect. God didn't ask you to judge us. But if you start telling us who we are, taking them tips from Delilah, you'll be surprised what God's created. The reason why the Bible says man finds a wife, finds a good thing, he found some glory. He found something that's going to make him be able to speak what he's supposed to speak and make it come to pass. Right now, ladies, I just want you to, I want you to give praise and create glory for these men. And at the same time, I want the men to give praise to God right now. Come on, come on, come on, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, come on, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you called us to be prophet, priest, and king, the covering of women, the covering of the children. We're the visionary. You called us, Lord, to bring and to move and to do those things that you have ordained. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We praise you. We say hallelujah to your name. We bless you, Lord. We see you, Lord. We walk with you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We honor you. We praise you. We adore you. King of kings, Lord of lords, keeper of my soul, Jehovah Jireh. Oh, come on, keep going. The Lord's going to set some things free in this house. There's an order going on in this place. There's an order going on. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this order. Fall fresh. Fall fresh in this order. Fall, fall. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Nobody said stop. This order hasn't been seen in a long time. Thank you, Lord. There's deliverance in this house, both for men and for women. There's a setting of the captive free for men and for women. We don't want Delilah. We need you. We need you. We need you. I need even an overflow. There's some men in this place made some big mistakes and you gave up just might as well be honest, men, we might as well, you gave up, just settled. And you're hearing God talk to you, and you're hearing that, that vision that God placed in you, that you were pushing and you got weary about. I go back to the message I gave a few Sundays ago. The Lord is still telling you to go back out and deep, even though it didn't work before. 
and you hadn't got it, you need the grace of God to kind of push you through. You've been walking around and ain't nobody been understanding. You thought you were crazy. You wasn't crazy. God was speaking to you. You just got to continue to stand and continue to speak. God will raise up those around you that will bring you glory. Isn't it amazing how folk get on TV, especially men, and they sit, so if, they, if they can get there, hey, mom, the reason why they're always saying hi, mom, because mom created glory for them. Mom made it possible. She was always encouraging and loving and creating glory. That same glory has to be transferred. I want to pray with you. I'm, I want to, you've been, you've been, you hadn't been rested in your spirit. It's been tight. It's been tough. Nobody's touched you. You haven't even felt love. <sighs> Can't talk to nobody because nobody understands where you are. And it's not so much that you need somebody to understand. <sighs> you just need a presence of God. A renewed spirit. Come on, fellas. Come right here. Let me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on up. Come on up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear my heart as pastor of this church and as I look even across the body of Christ. There's so much pain men are carrying. That's why we're so uptight. That's why we're sometimes mean. and We're trying to learn how to be men. We're trying to We've been abused just like you've been abused. The reason why we're abusive sometimes is because that's all we know. And I'm not making an excuse for any of these men because I will not tolerate off of past experiences abuse of the queens in this house and honoring you and children. I want you to hear this. A vision is a burden. And I believe the reason why it's so tight right now on especially black men, not that we're better than white men and stuff like that, we're all the same. But it seems like there's such a lack of understanding within our culture. Men are not loving women like they're supposed to, and women are not respecting men. We're more into the world, and everybody's trying to get, and nobody's trying to give. We can't talk because we're fake and phony. We're more careful in what we say to church folk than we were to worldly folk. Now I say to you men, I challenge you, find a safe, godly place to rest. Make it your home. Be you married or single, whatever it takes to make that place a place of rest. Wives. You got to work with that. Significant others, friends, got to work with it. I'm 
going to pray a release. That God just lifts what you've been carrying. Because it ain't yours. I was at the men's meet yesterday. Those of you who were here, some of the stuff you're carrying, you're not supposed to carry. He didn't put it on you. All you can do is what you can do. I said this morning, and I'll say it again. The kids and guys and girls who were raised with me, they don't believe what God is doing through me. They turn on the TV, and I was talking to a homegirl the other day, ran into at the store. She said, I ran into so-and-so, and they just sit up there and say, they're still amazed at you. They just sit up at TV. They don't listen to what you're saying. They just sit and they can't believe it's you. <laughs> I'm a living example of a foolish thing that God is using. And wherever you think you are, that from your actions that God can't use you and folk would be surprised, you know what? God's in the surprising. He is really into that. He is really into that. Lift your hands. I want you to say this, and then I'm going to pray. Please understand, there is, you can say Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tuscanu, Jehovah Salone, you can say all that, and that's fine. It talks about the different attributes of God. But once you got saved, when you say Father, that takes everything in account. He's your peace. He's your banner. He's your provider. He is. I just want you to say this after me. Father, Father I, stretch I stretch my hands, my hands to, thee. to thee. No other. I receive right now, receive right now. A, right a right spirit in me. In me. So give it to him, Lord. Yeah. So give it to him, Lord. So give it to him. Fill him with joy. Give him your peace. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that they see even more clearly their destiny, what you've called them to walk in, that you grace them, that you fill them with joy, knowing the joy of you is their strength. We declare it to be done. And every devil, Satan, Slewfoot, Beelzebub, no good lying rascal. I command you to leave these hearts, these minds, these homes, these lives in the name of Jesus by the blood of the Lamb. These are men of valor. These are holy men, bold, walking, strength, power of God. Set aside in the name of Jesus. Around this altar, give a brother a good hug, not a back slap, a good hug. Give him a good hug in the name of Jesus. 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 Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name, in the name. In the name. Hallelujah. Now, real quickly, I know we've been in here. Please, please, please just stay and don't, don't grieve the Holy Ghost. I'm getting ready to let you go. You needed to hear this. Everybody need to hear this. We're going to make sure this gets aired. And if the Lord leads me, ladies, I do know there's a balance on this, but you needed to hear this. 
And as I'm, and you, you pray and send up timber, the Lord speaks to me, and I continue to move in this, and speaking to you, and understanding, in reference to the other side. And at this moment, it's so important that in this house, there are men, women, boys, and girls who are not saved. There are fathers in this house who have families who are not covered. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare a covering. We declare a divine order in the name of Jesus. If you're not saved in the overflow, in the best of you, if you're not saved, and I want you men to turn to other men and witness right now and just find out if they're saved, if they have a church home or not. And then I ask it in the name of Jesus that you ask them if they're saved. Ladies in the pew, don't be looking around. There's somebody say, unsaved around you. Turn and ask it. Right now in the name of Jesus, as the men are making their way back to their seat, those of you who are not saved, we're asking that you would come. Prayer council, I'm going to ask some of the ministers to get down around the front. Pastor Kearney. inviting you to come from the overflow from wherever come 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 on come on come on new birth give them a hand give them a hand give them a hand Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, man, give God praise in this place. In the overflow, in the best of you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Now I'm going I'm gonna ask this one more time. One more time. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. You gotta get this. You gotta get this. You gotta get this. See the reason why the devil messes with you. Is because he don't want you to create no glory. Because if you create glory, then God's power is manifested. And the reason why we don't see manifested power of God, because we see tired, weary, worn, sad, beat up saints that can't say he's holy, that can't praise him, that can't bless him, so no glory is produced. God inhabits the praises of his people. When we praise and worship God in our daily lives, we create an atmosphere for his glory. Bishop Long has prepared a dynamic series of messages on the power of the glory of God. Satan is jealous about this thing called glory. If you need the supernatural power of God to move in your life or know someone who does, Call or write us today. Ask for the Power of the Glory series on video cassette for a gift of $60 or on audio cassette for a donation of $20. Write to New Birth Ministries, P.O. Box 2607, Atlanta, Georgia 30301. Or call 1 800 98 Jesus to order by credit card. Operators are standing by. <laughs> 